Hey guys, what's up? So this is a guide for Arena, a complete guide for Arena. Uh, let me just give you the structure. I'll co I'll first cover the loadouts, then I'll cover like what to do for each r type of rounds that you can get, the, all the variations. And after that, I'll show you um, every single map on Arena what to do and how to do it. And yeah, I guess the bosses, if there's anything to add, I'll, I'll do that as well uh, to finish. So starting off with the, the loadouts. This is the loadout I like the most for me. But uh, it's probably not the same for you because I had shot a lot. So I like to use um, Dead Eye 3 and Lock and Load. But those are not necessary. And this I'll also explain you why it's here as well it's not just to dance around the Asgard now the things that are really like most important I would say that can help you the most it's obviously a radar depends who you're playing with because if you're playing with a team that you know you guys know the spots and what you're doing you don't really need a radar because if you're doing a specific spot, they're only going to come from the same the same place, so you know where they are. All the, you don't really need to see where they are because they're just coming out in front of you already. But uh, I don't know, if you want, I mean, Raider is cool, especially if you're like playing with randoms, randoms or something like that. People are just running all over the map, which makes them, the spawns out of control. And then you can, you can get people spawning behind you, all kinds of stuff, so... It's best to, if you can, use the radar in that case, so you, you don't get like flank and you, you don't get surrounded without knowing, you know. Now, another perk that can be good is Harden, especially if you're playing on solo, because of the flinching and all that. Now, if you're not the host, you're, meaning you're not playing solo and you're not the host, you maybe you cannot use it and do the wall trick instead to avoid the flinching. Now, Speedy G, I like to use it as well. I, I would recommend, I mean, at least level 2, you know, at least level 1 or 2 or 3 if you really want to. It will help you, like, get out of situations faster because you, you have the fast movement. And also between the, the rounds, they, they start pretty fast, unlike the uh, normal stages with the stars. So if you have this, you can run to the uh, suicide spot in, in time mostly and not miss the the time you have to get the, the ammo again um like i said i headshot a lot so i use that eye but you can totally use if you're not that keen into headshotting you can use the price fighter 3 because in the arena there's actually a lot of like those light guys minions where they, they you can easily kill them with just one punch so in case they get close to you or maybe you're just rushing around you can totally use this it's a good perk just like the dead eye um gear master 3 is good because you're gonna be getting a lot of kills meaning and you're also gonna be getting a lot of gear because of that so if you feel like putting this on your loadout you will use it a lot you can also play safe by using mines or c4s with this you can have seven of them which is a lot to like cover your around you to stop them from you know surrounding and stuff i'll also just demonstrate this when i get to the maps now again reviving i, I don't really like using those things because i think if you just if you stay alive you you worry about staying alive you don't need to be reviving anyone so I don't really like using these perks, but I guess if you want, you could use like maybe this down, but not out of the quick healer. I mean, you know, helping hand. Now, this is also a really good one to use quick healer. Uh, this uh, our explosive master, I would recommend more if you have. Um, a few points to, uh, like a major loadout and you have it maybe two points to spare or something and you don't know what to use it in then you can use on this 
or what I like to do, I, I use it on this, which I'll explain later how it works and why I use it. Gunslinger is a good option too for a filler. And besides that, you can also use Iron Jaw if you want to be safe, not to like get those guys that come behind you out of nowhere and punch you to death. If you have this on, that, that is, they will still punch you, but that's, you're not gonna die. And of course, every weapon expert is also pretty good because if you notice, every round they give you power, I mean, heavy weapons. So if you have this perk, you can really like abuse some somewhat the the heavy weapons in the game. I mean, you get almost a full heavy weapon if you, you know, grab them, scavenge them after the rounds, and you can use them on the next round. So. Especially for the boss fights, you have more damage on your heavy weapons, the harbinger and all that. So for arena, it's actually a pretty useful one too. You can be just using heavy weapons all the time with extra damage. Um, this if you want to level up, of course, the uh, farmer. Now this... You don't really use mysticals all that much, so... We, um, the mystical expert too, I mean, or if you want to be play safe or you can have like three Tintamani's or Path of Injuries to revive your teammates, then I guess you could totally use that. Or, or even maybe for the siege if you want to have three of Dorados, you know. And that's more of a, a safe perk than actually useful. And this goes with the, the um, helping hand. I mean, I don't like to use it because for me it's just a waste. You just worry about not dying and you won't worry about reviving anyone as consequence so and now the the most important of all is using this one which is that fast because really the only thing pretty much the only thing that makes the arena hard is those guys that have explosives and they pretty much kill you with one shot and you can barely react to it so this 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 perk will fix this booster will fix that I mean, if you have level 2 is, is great, but at least a level 1, that way you're not dying instantly out of those, those sh explosives. But I mean, if you have level 2, 1 is like totally, it's like you just went from crushing to, to moderate difficulty just by using this. Because suddenly you see everything gets a lot easier. Like they can throw grenades on you, Did you, you not die at all anymore. Cause like I said, just, the explosives are really what what make the arena hard. Like only that. Cause besides that, it's just camping on the spot and shooting the guys that come at you, just like the stars. So the main key here is, is if you most important is using this. Make sure you you remember that. If you don't have it, I mean, I'll tell you an alternative. But if you have it, make sure you use at least level one. It's only one point, so you can use it as a filler pretty well. And what I like to do instead is using the Asgard instead of using that, which fits fits my loadout with three points. But uh, I'll explain it later. Now those are the uh, this part, the boosters that are really gonna help you. And uh, but for like to be extra safe, meaning you really just don't want to die, and you wanna give yourself the most chances to like you know not die and not fail the rounds. I would recommend just using something like this which is like a super safe loadout I mean we make it almost impossible to die really like you can see where they are so you're not gonna get surrounded nobody's gonna come from your back without you knowing it you have steadfast too so no explosives will instantly kill you <clears throat> you have PG, so you can do all. You can run out, out of problem really fast and all that. Quick healer, you can heal a lot faster from the damages, and you can still take the punches and not die. So, this is kind of the ultimate safe loadout. <laughs> I mean, pretty much for any kind of, you know. And if you don't want to use the raider, um, you can still put those points to use on PG. 
and here for example then you're even more safe I mean if you know where they're coming and you don't need the radar it's even more safe now you could also maybe put those points to quick healer 3 if you want you know it's like you can play around but the the, the perks they're really like make it super safe for these ones Uh, you can even fit a harden if you don't want to use the radar. But like really these are the the five perks that don't make the most difference in being like in not dying at all. I mean if using something like this, I mean it's really really hard to almost impossible to die. Unless you're just literally just like jumping on them and, and letting them shoot you, but if you're actually trying it with this loadout is almost impossible to die so yeah this is kind of my safe loadout I'll recommend you and uh, you see my loadout I'll show you again the one I personally like to use which is yeah I, I could also put speedy G here on my loadout level one but I don't do it because I mean I just like to be safe against those explosives which I use the uh, the Asgard for that as I'll, I'll show you soon so this is where I like to use that I lock and load also lock and load is because of the ammo I can you know during the round I don't go out of ammo because I'm headshotting and it gives me more ammo back and so I, I don't have to like in the middle of the round have to deal with not having ammo on my prim primary uh, I use Harden too, where is Harden? and the Asgard there it is I mean I could even switch those t these two for a gear master if I wanted but then I'll really kill a lot but I want to be give the option to do well if I'm the host, so I, I have hard in there. It also just helps. I mean, either way. And this is to avoid the explosives. Instead of using stead fast, I'm using this, and I'll show you why. So this is personally my favorite loadout if you want to try it out. But you have to be headshotting, otherwise, lock and load is kind of useless, and you're just wasting points. You could also just change it for some maybe for heavy weapon expert if you're not that good with the headshottings and this is what I would use then you could even do maybe something like this if you're not the uh, I, I, I would probably use that if I was not the host where is it there it is you see like class like this I mean I have all kinds of advantages here to kill them and I still have the the safe option here but uh, I like to, to have hard in here so I don't do that and yeah okay so now let's go to the um, this is the loadouts I like to use the, per the boosters and you need to know what they do and what they don't now let's go talk about the rounds the variations and all that and how you deal with them okay guys so the variations are pretty simple like Let's start with this map, which is the first on the list, but um, what, I, what I explain here goes for every map, it's just the same idea. Um, uh, talk, let's start with the siege, sieges, right? No, like the survival, right? The normal rounds. There's always, for this map, for example, the spot is, is right here. And you can just, all three of you stay here and they'll come from there and you just shoot them, throw grenades if you want. So all maps are like this, you know, there's a, a safe spot where you all you, your team can stay and you just look at them and let them come to you and you just pretty much all three of you destroy them <laughs> like shooting at the same time and for this map this is the this, this spot 
So for the survival rounds, Markman, all that kind of stuff where you're just killing them, you can stay here. You, if you stay on the other side, there, on the other stairs, they will, they will start spawning from there. But you can still wait them and shoot them where they climb up there, here. So that's survival. Survival, the idea is get a camp the best camping spot where you can stay with your team so if you die you know you're still next to each other you can easily revive and shoot them when they come to you that's for markman and that's for like survival any kind of variation to those even the the mirror row mirror ro row where like everything changes the perspective everything is inverted you also want to do the same go to the same spot you, the, the only difference is you will be shooting from the other side now because it's all inverted now for the sieges, every map on Arena has two or three sieges variations. Uh, meaning like locations. For this map, the siege is here. Which is the normal one. And uh, you could probably have like one guy watching here. Yeah, the best thing you can do is because it's like divide. Like one person watching one side, one person watching the other side and one, the third person watching the other side that way you can cover you know every direction at the same time so if you have a coordinated team and you're doing siege you, you remember that but if you have radar if everyone on the team has radar you notice that they follow a pattern so for example the first guys will, will only come from there at first the first guy so having someone here is kind of pointless at that point so you can have all three here and then using the radar the second sort of wave will come off from there so all three can look there you know if you have radar you can adapt to that but if you don't I would just recommend that you and you can quickly like transition you're looking from here and then here you know just make have one every person look at one spot one direction and uh, the second uh, seed spot for this map is is right there which you can stay like uh, here you're still inside the siege the siege kind of ends here so and uh, they usually spawn there in the, the stairs first and the second wave comes from there so yeah this is the second siege and like I said about using gear master in your loadout you can have like seven mines and all that Especially for CG, kind of useless, useless, useful. You can have the, uh, you know, mines here, for example, just in case you get overwhelmed by those guys coming from there. The mines will push them back. C4s, for that matter, anything goes. Like you can have mines there. You know, just have mines like around your, around you to, to, not to keep them away from overrunning you. So for this map specifically, that's the uh, the survival now, and this is a siege. And uh, oh yeah, one one point, the the game he never really repeats the same siege because you have multiple siege rounds in one arena. So usually what four or three sieges in one arena. So just keep in mind that he never really repeats like in a row the same spot. So let's just say the first siege was there. Because there are only two siege locations, the the second one is going to be here by default, so to speak. Because he, he will never repeat the same siege twice. So you, you can know that in your head, like, if the second siege comes up and you know you already did the first one there, you know the second one can only be here. Also, I think there's actually a third siege is like here in the fountain and all. Which usually is the siege that only takes place when it's when it's round ten, round ten siege. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that if I remember correctly, there's a siege like here is a siege where I am now in the stairs, and they usually come from there and, and from there. So yeah, let's just say this is the third siege. But this is, as far as I remember, you only get this when it's the last siege round, like the ten, which is the hardest one. So for this map, those would be the, the three sieges. Now the treasure, the first wave of treasures on the treasure hunter. 
starts here like all over the fountain there's treasures there at the top now the idea for treasures on arena is that especially I mean if you're playing with good people is you don't really have to follow this but especially if you're playing with some bad players or just randoms that don't know what they're doing and you're the good player make sure you grab the one the treasures that are like on the opening like as fast as the first ones you know don't worry about the others get the ones that are in the open as fast as possible because the ones that are like inside cover it's really easy to if you're the last man standing it's pretty easy to grab it and I say this last man standing because like I said if you're playing with bad players it's very likely they will die and you have to probably finish the round alone so by grabbing the I mean you could just follow the same strategy with three players really just because at the start of the round the enemies are not surrounding you yet so you, you can take that time to get the the hardest treasure so to speak let's call it like that the most dangerous treasures where you're like in the open and everyone can be shooting you at the same time the enemies so for this the, the open ones would be like right here in the rope where I'm doing now there's uh, the rope here once you get there's treasures there but once you get like in spots like this where you, you pretty like there's walls and everything where you can hide easily not get shot from all directions then I'll, I'll just leave those for later grab the ones that are like for example here in the fountain they're like really in the open because you can have enemies like all over the place shooting you while, while you're grabbing those which make you die like really fast you can also use gym while you're getting these ones in the open the gym mysticals to help you even further and after you grab the ones that are the most exposed you can go for the uh, the ones that are like for example here this treasure is like pretty safe at best you can only be shot from the back and from the front so it's a lot less damage than staying here where everyone shoots you from all directions now this then the second wave transitions to here then the open treasures will be right like right here in this pathway there's also treasures here in the rope these ones I'd like to say for last they are like here in the, the climbing thing but like yeah just grab the ones that are in the open like there's one the rope too first and then worry about the ones that are like in cover and easy to you know safer not not so exposed get the, the treasures that are most exposed first uh, now the another variation it's the um, headshots round which you can do the same just stay on the the safe for all the, those maps I mean in general just stay on the camping spot try to headshot and if they got get close you can melee uh, oh yeah one other thing I'll, I'll give you as a tip uh, this works for the armor too, pretty much anyone. The hunter sometimes it doesn't work. I mean, it actually does, but you have to get the timing right. Which is when, for the armor, he would have to be out of helmet, of course, before you do this. But you you can throw the grenade near him, which is gonna stun him, uh, making so like he he falls on the ground and he's kind of, you know, getting up. And while he's doing that if you go behind him like directly on his back while he's getting up like that and you press the uh, the melee button he will like kick him in the back and is an instant kill no regardless of how much health he has this is for like any enemy like any enemy that you can stun like that with a grenade or even a china lake or RPG any kind of explosive that stuns them while they're getting up from the ground if you go behind him direct it must be like you cannot do it from the side it must be directly from behind them and then you behind the well towards his back and you press the the melee button he'll kick him and it's an instant kill for the armor like like guys anyone yeah I, I know we're gonna be a demonstrator of me but yeah, so just keep that in mind. If you like, you want to melee the guy, but he has too much health still. You can do that. You can use a grenade or an explosive too. And you just skip all the animation of having to give him five punches before he dies. You just do it in a one one kick. Now the timing is is very strict in a way. So if he's already like halfway up, and you try this, it's not gonna work. 
then he'll do the the normal melee but if you if you get it fast enough like when he's really down on the ground then you can you see like right now you see right like I am right now he's like he was like on his knees and stuff this is when you want to go behind him and melee and it's an instant kill for chokers like anything they must have the, the helmet off if they're armor okay so that's some tip for the headshots now actually I'll give you another one you can also insta kill with the melee and insta kill I mean regardless if you have price fighter or not like regardless if you're using price fighter or not if you can melee them towards an edge like this then it's also an insta kill because they make like the like the animation where they're going to fall because you're you're melee them like towards this direction towards the edge and then it's a it's like it's also a one hit melee kill it like immediately once they hit they get to the edge and the same goes for any any kind of enemy armored or not just one kill regardless of how many health he has he has and uh, like just like uh, you can kick him behind cover where he, he vaults and do the kick that's a good way to push them towards the uh, it's the best way actually to push them towards the edge of something so if you can use the, the cover to do that and you just for example if I was here I, I would probably kick him from here which would put him around here and then I would turn around him and start mailing from this direction so I, I start to push him towards the edge now okay that's headshots now another variation that happens a lot is the where you have three times the damage for explosives during that round you can probably buy two china lakes from the arsenal then you have eight bullets and if you have on your loadout a uh, heavy weapon expert three and uh, explosive master one or two they all will affect the damage that your explosive do and together they will stack so if you have like explosive master two and still have weapon expert three and you're using a china league during that round you pretty much got a one shot kill anything like even the brute because the the damage is increased so just keep that in mind those those do affect the damage of explosives the heavy weapons because you're using china leak it's a heavy weapon so it will increase the damage and the uh the explosive master because it's an explosive regardless if it's from a weapon or not so it will also increase the damage so they do stack and uh you do the same thing you would camp here and throw the explosives to do to pretty much instant kill now I would just recommend that you use the, the explosives when you see there are a lot of them together so you can get multi kills instead of throwing like one explosive for one guy alone so just do that keep shooting them like normal and if you see like there's two or three together or more then you throw your grenade over China Lake and you will like kill all of them in one go especially for the brute you want to save the explosives for him which he's the one that takes longer to die with the three times damage you can kill him in like two shots or so and uh, yeah that's pretty much for this map guys the bosses is what I have the guides on the bosses and the channel if you want to check it out it's the same idea for arena or not I uh, will I'll probably link those in the description as well and at the end of the video I have on all the bosses already and um, yeah so let's go to the next map Okay guys, so the next map is um, Rooftops, this is also an arena, a new map. Now starting off with sieges, I can already cover, there's a siege inside here, here's a siege. There is a siege over there where I'm going now, like right there, there's a siege. Like here and they spawn like in front of you there those are two sieges now for the survival you can have all three people here and th they spawn up top up top there and they come down the stairs you can grenade you can shoot them 
You can also have someone stay here. All, all these spots work. All three of you, or one of you, two of you, anyone can stay here, solo or whatever. They, you can stay here, but it's not that good of an angle because of the wall. Still works though. And the further you can go is here to where, because you, you don't want to cross the line in the middle of the map. That's where it will make it change. And you want to have people on the left side, left side portion of the map to make them spawn there. So you you don't want to have someone here, there, for example, where I'm shooting, because that's the left side of the map. So if if all three people all three people stay like here, for example, it would not it would change the spawn because you're crossing that middle line. And you're also at the left, so it, it would make them spawn on the right there. Which is not that far, really, but just stay there, it's a better angle. So either there, up there, or you can stay here too. This is where I like to do, is I just stay here. And you can get the, a good shot there before, because from here you cannot really see that, that, that deep. You see, but from here you, it still works, and you can see like a lot deeper. You can see all the way to the back there. So this is all three people can see here. This is what I like, but this is like not that safe to be honest, unless you're killing them like really fast. Because once they get to to there, you're pretty exposed. Every, all your team. So if there's many of them, you, you can all die if you're not killing them fast enough. So just maybe have like one guy here or two just to be safe if you want. But if you're killing them fast enough, it works fine there, the those spot there. So that for survival markman and all that. Also do the mirror around there. Uh, CJ was telling you here, you can have mines again if you're using Gear Master, mines, C4s, all over this to uh, to cover you. And um, the third and final siege location, it's right up there like right here is I am decided right now this is the third siege and uh, you can also have mines and all that to cover you now the uh, treasure treasure round uh, let me see if I can actually remember this. I know there's a. I think it starts here actually. Yeah, yeah, it starts here. Like there's treasures all over here. There's treasure below, there's treasure there. And again, same idea. Grab the ones that are most exposed first. For example, this is not exposed, so leave it for last. These are all exposed. Then you grab them all. The, if you're also using the. Because sometimes you have tre treasures with mi mirror around. So you you can see where they are on the radar, but just know the they are all over this area, like below there. You can also use the rope here. There's treasures here. There's some treasures like I think it's like here where you have to climb to get it. And the second wave of, of treasures they transition to this side where I'm going now. And they they ha they are all over here. There's like treasures there, treasures using the rope here. And I think actually some treasures inside there as well. The the house there. And uh, yeah, that's treasures for this map. I cover you the sieges, and that's the, for the survivals and all that. Now. Um, but one thing more about the sieges, like I said. It never repeats the uh, the same siege. So let's say, th and also the third siege seems to be where the um, actually the fourth siege seems to be where the second siege was. Meaning, so let's say the first siege was there. Then I know the second siege can only be there or there, right? Because th that's it's not going to repeat the same. So let's just say the second siege was there. Then the third siege was there, maybe. At this point, it seems like the game, if he, if he's going to repeat it, because at this point, all three sieges were done already. So it seems like he repeats the, the second one in the order. After that, when, when is the fourth siege? But uh, yeah, but just keep in mind, if it's never the, the same one twice, so 
just by knowing that you can already eliminate an option so makes it you can have like if you're trying to do it fast at the start of a round you can just separate for example the first siege was there so now we know it's going to be one of those two so you can have your three players you can have one player standing there and one player standing there like during the transition to which then when it starts you want one of them is going to be inside it already so it will start the the siege right away instead of you having to let's just see all three of you were there and it's the siege and ended up being there and you have to waste all the time to go there and start you know but if you have people separated like this you don't waste that time you can already start killing while the uh you know while your teammate that is in the wrong place will go to you you can also use you can use path of danger if you want to just go from there to you in one second but uh yeah th for this map that's it uh the sieges i just showed showed you the treasure and the um the positions so let's go for the next one okay guys so this is the third map on the list scotland this is not a new map but um uh, the treasure is the same if you remember from the stars now the spots for the survivals and all that you can have two people there and they're gonna be shooting up there and you can have the third the third guy here watching the cave or you could just have all three here really but you make sure you have someone watching there because they're gonna be coming from here if you have all three people here so you could have two shooting there and one guy just watching the the loose ends that come from here. Now the treasure, uh, you you know, it starts there. All, all over here is treasure, and uh, it, it then transitions to over there. Now for the siege, there is one siege here where I'm standing now. It's a siege location for siege location the second siege location is right here where I'm standing now I'm inside the siege and it goes all the way up to this door here and the third location for the siege is right there which is the the harder one of the the, the two the best place you can be is probably up top here you can also stay behind here you know the safe the safer ones than staying up in them because up there you don't really have anywhere to go you have a bit more of mobility down here you can also watch like from here behind the rocks here is still inside so and for for this stage here I'll, I'll give you another tip I noticed the um, the best, the, the easiest spot to, to place for for the CG that starts there. You stay, because here is still inside, all the way to the back here. So I just noticed here is a lot more safe. You know, you can shoot them from here. You're still inside the siege. It's a lot more safe than staying like here or so. Because they come from, you can, you can do it, but I'm just saying like, they come from there. And they come from up top there, so just staying here like is way too close to their to their spawn. Usually they they climb here and maybe they surround you and all that. I just noticed that staying up all the way to the back there is like a lot lot more safe and it makes it easier to complete this this siege here, especially with the China Lake explosives. But uh, yeah, for for this map that that's it. Let's go to the next one.